JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for November the 10th. I am Harlambos Pissuros, senior market analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded uh, mixed against the other G10 currencies on Monday and during the Asian morning Tuesday. It gained against the CHF, JPY, the Euro and the Aussie in that order, while it underperformed versus NOC and the Kiwi. The greenback was found virtually unchanged against the GBP, the Canadian dollar and SEC. Now the weakening of the safe havens, franc and yen, combined with the strengthening of the oil-related NOC and the risk-linked Kiwi, suggests uh, that the markets continue trading in a risk-on manner. Indeed, major EU indices uh, skyrocketed on average 6.26% uh, uh, each, while in the US, uh, both the Dow Jones and uh, the S&P 500 gained 2.95% uh, and 1.17% respectively, hitting new intraday records. On the other hand, the tech-heavy Nasdaq slid 1.53%. Today in Asia, market appetite was somewhat softer with Japan's Nikkei 225, Hong Kong's Hang Seng and South Korea's KOSPI rising only 0.26, 0.70 and 0.23% respectively. China Shanghai Composite was down 0.40%. The rally in most uh, equities came up after Pfizer Inc. and uh, BioNTech said that uh, their, experiment, their experimental vaccine was more than 90% effective in preventing COVID-19. Uh, Sectors which were hit the hardest uh, by the restrictive measures aimed at, at carping the virus like uh, energy, travel and financials were among the biggest gainers with oil prices surging as well on expectations that demand would uh, rise again as people may become more comfortable with the idea of traveling soon. On the other hand, stocks that outperformed during the pandemic like Netflix, Amazon and Zoom Video fell sharply. That's why Nasdaq was the only US index to close in negative waters. Equity indices around the globe were already trending north on expectations that uh, US President-elect Joe Biden will adopt a softer stance uh, than Trump in handling the trade, relationship, the trade relationships of the US with the rest of the world. US indices were also on the rise as uh, a Republican-controlled Senate may not allow Biden to proceed with increasing uh, corporate taxes and tightening regulations. As for our view, it it is still too early to start cheering the COVID, uh, that the COVID uh, era is behind us. There are still many questions with regards to the vaccine uh, to be answered, such as how effective it is uh, by age or how long immunity could last. That may have been the reason behind the profit-taking correction we saw a few hours after the rally triggered by the positive vaccine news. Having said all that, though, we are a step closer than yesterday in finding the cure uh, for this virus, which combined with uh, Biden's victory may allow investors to jump back into the action and push risk-linked assets back up. We would treat any further uh, declines as a corrective pullback of the broader uptrend. As uh, for tonight, during the Asian morning uh, Wednesday, the RBNZ decides on monetary policy. When they last met, policymakers of this, of this bank kept their official cash rate and their large-scale asset purchase uh, program unchanged, repeating that further monetary stimulus may be needed in the foreseeable future, including a funding for lending program, a negative official cash rate, and purchases of foreign assets. 
That said, a few weeks ago, RBNZ Assistant Governor Christian Hogesby said that some economic data have surprised to the upside, reducing their chances for the adoption of negative interest rates by this bank. However, he added that the discussion of negative rates is not a game of bluff, keeping the prospect well on the table. So with all that in mind, we don't expect the bank to act at this gathering, but we do expect it to keep the prospect of further easing well on the table. Officials' willingness to take interest rates into the negative territory if needed may hurt somewhat the Kiwi, but we expect the currency to stay mostly linked to developments surrounding the broader market sentiment. If the risk on trading due to the COVID vaccine news and due to the outcome of the, ele of the US election uh, continues, any RBNZ-related slide may stay limited and short-lived, with the risk-linked currency rebounding and extending, and extending its uh, latest uh, short-term uptrend. Now, as uh, for today's events, dur during the early European morning, we already got the UK employment uh, report for September. The unemployment rate rose to 4.8% from 4 from 4.5%, but both the including and excluding bonuses earnings rates uh, rose more than anticipated. From Germany, we have the ZW survey for November. Both the current conditions and the economic sentiment indices are expected to have declined to minus 65 and 40 from minus 59.5 and 56.1 respectively. At its uh, latest meeting, the ECB noted that uh, in December, the new macroeconomic projections will allow a thorough uh, reassessment of the economic outlook and that the governing council will uh, recalibrate its instruments as appropriate. In other words, in other words uh, the ECB is very likely to expand its uh, stimulative efforts in December and declining ZW indices will only add to that uh, likelihood. Later in the day, from the US, we get the jolt job openings for September and the American Petroleum Institute report on crude oil inventories for last week. As uh, for the speakers, we have only one on today's agenda, and this is Fed Board Governor uh, Randall Quarles. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar which I'm holding every Monday at uh, 8 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.